Component props allow us to pass data from a parent component down to a child. We do this through custom attributes on the parent component's HTML tag. As a side note, props are only used for parent to child communication. If we want to communicate from the child to the parent, we have to use component events, which we cover in another lesson. The first step to create a prop is to add a custom attribute to the component instance that we want to pass data to. The value is whatever data we want to send down to the child component. We'll start by creating a new component called childgreeting.view. Then we'll add it to the root app component. Next, we'll add an attribute called first name to the instance and duplicate it down three times with shift, alt, and the down arrow key. That's all we need to do from the parent side. The next step is to register the prop in the child so view knows to expect a value from it. To do that, we add the prop to an array in the props option of the config object. In our example, the prop name is first name. The final step is to use the data we're receiving somewhere in the child component. We can perform operations on the prop value, just like we would with a data property, or we can output it in the template. For our example, we'll just output it in a paragraph in the template. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see four paragraphs with the four different names. View allows us to use as many props on an element as we need. There's nothing special we need to do, we can just add more props. To demonstrate, let's add a second prop to our first child instance, called last name. Then, we'll switch over to the child component and register and use it. If we save and take a look in the browser, we see the new prop added to the output. If a prop name has multiple words, we can use kebab casing. Just like component names, we don't have to change the prop name because Vue will automatically convert it. To demonstrate, let's change our example to use kebab casing. The convention is to use kebab case for attributes, so we'll do it that way from now on. At the moment, we're passing static values to our props. But, we can also use the vbind directive to bind dynamic data. That's to say, we can bind data properties or computed properties to props on a component. To do that, we bind to the prop and specify the data or computed property as the value. Let's change our example to bind to the first and last names. If we run the example in the browser, we can see the bindings work as expected. For the computed property example, we'll create a computed property that combines the first and last names. Then, we'll change the binding to a full name. Finally, we'll replace the two previous props in the child component with the new full name prop. If we save and take a look in the browser, we'll see the greeting for the full name from the computed property. When we're working with others on a project, it's useful to specify the type of value a prop needs to have. This way, other developers can see at a glance what type of data the prop should accept. To do this, we change the props option in the child component from an array to an object. Then, we specify the prop name and type as a key value pair. To demonstrate, let's modify the full name prop from our example to have a type. If we save and take a look in the browser, we see that the example still displays the full name. Now, let's change the type to a number 
and see what happens. If we take a look in the browser, everything still works, even though the type is different. That's because, view doesn't perform a strong type check. That's to say, the compilation won't fail if the wrong type is used. View only raises a warning if the type doesn't match. If we open up the browser's dev tools and look in the console, we'll see the warning message. The type feature mostly serves as a documentation for developers to easily see what type of value we intend for the prop. View allows us to make a prop required by setting the required prop option to true. To use extra options, we convert our prop to an object. In the object, we specify options like type and required as key value pairs. To demonstrate, let's modify the child component in our example and add the required option. As with the type, the required option is a soft check and won't produce a compilation error, but rather raise a warning in the browser's console. To demonstrate, we'll remove everything related to the prop in the parent component. When we save and take a look at the browser, only the hard-coded values are displayed. And in the console, we see the warning for the missing prop. Another option we can specify on an individual prop is the default option. View will use the default option when the attribute isn't present on the tag. Like with required, the prop has to be converted to an object to accept default as the option. To demonstrate, let's add a default value to our child component's prop. In the parent component, we don't have a prop on the tag at all, so the default value should kick in. If we take a look in the browser, it shows the default value, unknown. The default option only works if an attribute isn't present on the tag. If the attribute is present, but empty, view will show it as nothing. To demonstrate, let's add the prop back to the tag, but keep its value empty. If we save and take a look in the browser, nothing shows where the name should be. We can add standard HTML attributes that aren't props to a component. To demonstrate, let's add a CSS class to our example. If we save and take a look at the browser, the new styling is applied. In the next video, we'll learn a simple state management solution with the provide and inject APIs. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.